So this video is going to show you how I fixed a structural crack in a boat. Now there's a couple of components to a boat that are structural. One is the bulkheads and two is the gunnel. There are several others as well. And when those, when those structural cracks happen, you want to fix them before you continue to use the boat in a normal way. Canoe's no different. If you, if you continue to use the boat in a normal way, you risk further damage to the structure of the boat. Now in this case, I wind up, you'll see at the very end, I wind up noticing that the, that the structure has actually changed positions. Had I noticed that at the beginning, it was a pretty large crack, had I noticed that at the beginning, I may have decided to put a, a bracer board in place while I was gluing the structure, the, the gunnel. In this case, I didn't notice it in time. Um, and it's not going to move anymore because now the structure has been, been glued together. Anyway, I'm glad you're here and I hope that you uh, enjoy the video on how I fixed the, the crack in the gunnel. Press like if you enjoyed the video. So we we're fixing the canoe. And what happened is the gunnel has developed a crack. It actually has three cracks. I'm going to show the fix of one. So the, the uh, problem with this is a gunnel is structural and of course we don't want to take it out in the water with a, with a pretty nicely developed crack here because the gunnel is structural. Let's see what we're going to do to, to fix this. So the, the couple of things, we, um, you know, we, we got some rough sandpaper and in this case, I don't know if you could see it very well, but we were able to, or I was able to, Put the sandpaper in between the cut or the crack so i'm going to rough it up a little bit and then we're going to use some type of epoxy to seal it up and in my case i'm going to use jb weld why jb weld well, a couple of reasons uh, i considered a like a west systems um like 105 but the thing is, is i i don't need a gallon of it and uh I only needed this small spot, well, three spots at the moment. And JB Weld has a, 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 a what is it called? A higher strength formula, highest, the highest strength formula of 5,000 PSI. So the, uh, uh, the gunnel is never going to experience that. I mean, certainly the wood is going to crack way before 5,000 PSI. West Systems is around 1,000 PSI and it, the wood is gonna crack way before a thousand PSI even. However, I just didn't need a gallon of it and it was gonna cost $100 for a gallon of West Systems 105. So JB Weld's five bucks and it's, uh, it's tried and tested, works on wood, definitely is waterproof, so it's gonna work out. So a couple of other things we're gonna need. Somehow, we're gonna have to get the the uh, epoxy is deep inside this groove as we can. Now I've gotten two things. I got a, a blade, a safety razor, uh, that I'm gonna try to use to squeegee it all up in there. And if I can't get it up in there with the, with the safety razor, I actually have brought out some floss. Now the problem is, is I won't know which one of these is gonna work until after I start the process. So that's why I went ahead and brought them both out. I, of course, have my gloves because there's no reason not to work with gloves. And I, I think I'm gonna go ahead and tape it up a little bit here just so uh, we're gonna prevent ourselves from getting a whole bunch of junk all over the rest of the uh, canoe. And also, we have some clamps. I brought three clamps out here so we can, we can try to get this thing set. And the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to set the set the wood. Let's see if I can do it here. Wow, that's so I'm not moving it. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that or not, but it is not moving. So let's see what we can do with the second clamp. Yeah, so. That's what it's going to look like when it's uh, when it's clamped on, and we want to make sure that the clamps are going to be holding well. 
before we uh, before we do anything, before we get any of the JB weld out, we want to make sure that that clamp is going to be uh, looking nice and nice and tight. Now, of course, we're going to have to wipe off the excess after we do the clamping, so we have to be prepared for that too. So, however you're going to do it, be prepared because once JB weld sets, it's going to be hard to get off, and that's why I'm suggesting taping it up. So, I'm going to go get some tape as well. So I'm going to be right back. I'm going to put my gloves on and, um, and get some tape out and uh, let's see what we can do. So I'll be right back. So here's a, a good advantage to using 105. In my case, I used epoxy that, that looks kind of darkish gray in color and it would show, right? So I was trying not to let it show. So I... Um, I had to spend a lot more time in, in trying to get rid of the extra epoxy. If I had used 105, which maybe I should have now think, thinking about it, I would not have been faced with um, quite so much damage control. This is what it looks like after it's dried. Uh, I had put that paper uh, on here to make sure that we didn't wind up with any uh, any problems with the uh, the rubber uh, attaching to the boat? That would have been bad. So it looks like that that the there's a little bit of a ledge down here that I can feel. So I didn't notice that before, but it looks like the boat has actually you know sagged a little bit right there. Um, I'm not sure I could have done anything about it had I known, had I found that out, but it's definitely sealed pretty good. I mean, I don't have any access to, um, you know, to, to between the wood fibers. And the same holds true for the two inside areas. I can't get, I can't get uh, underneath the, uh, the wood, so that's good. So I'm going to sand it off a little bit and we'll be good to go.